Well, thanks for joining us again this morning. Um, happy that uh, you, you uh, logged on and that you're watching. And yeah, as you can notice, um, Charlie has gotten significantly younger and has grown quite the beard. Um, but it's actually not Charlie at all. It's uh, Sean joining me this morning. Um, so yeah, super happy to have you here. Uh, Sean did not warn me that he was going to wear a college shirt or a nice vest or nice pants, so I feel slightly underdressed, but... Well, I haven't been able to dress up for so long, it's being trapped at home, <laughs> so I, I got to take my chances where yeah. I can get them. Yeah, totally. I agree. I have a whole, like, grouping of shirts in my closet that just are getting no, no wear lately, but yeah, yeah, but anyways... You um, clearly are enjoying dress dressing down. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've really settled in uh, to the new norm. But yes, anyways, we'll stop talking about our uh, wardrobe um, choices and, and continue. But yeah, Sean, before all this happened, we uh, Sean was on the, the list to, to speak on Hebrews 11, and, and that's what he's going to speak on this, this morning. So um, definitely excited to, to have him here and um, yeah, to hear what he has to, to share with us. Um, just before we get started, I just want to make mention, and most of you guys are, are probably aware, but um, on Tuesday morning, uh, Janice uh, McKenzie um, passed away and, and went to be um, with the Lord. And uh, yeah, just want to personally just say to, uh, to Doug and um, to April, to Diane, um, to Jill, to Janie, um, to the families um, that we, yeah, we are mourning uh, with you and also rejoicing with you. Um, yeah, that, that Janice has uh, received the, the crown and the reward um, that she has been eagerly uh, anticipating. And so, yeah, we, uh, these are interesting times and um, normally we would be uh, planning some sort of memorial um, and celebration of life, um, but obviously that uh, will be postponed at this point and um, I know Charlie posted a, a longer uh, video um, and address to, um, to the family uh, earlier this week so if, if you haven't had a chance to check that out we would definitely uh, encourage you to and we just uh, yeah I know for for many of us um, Janice uh, will be greatly missed she was a bright and shining light in um, in this world and in this fellowship and for some of you who don't know her um, Doug and and Janice uh, were among some of the first people uh, who who came to Vernon um, to uh, to to plant the church here, um, and so um, they've been a major part of of our fellowship. And um, their legacy, uh, Janice's legacy, is will continue to impact um, many people in this church. So, uh, yeah, if uh, you didn't have an opportunity to uh, read the passage that we're going to be uh, sharing out of this morning, then you can pause right now um, and do that as, as a family and uh, take a look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11 all the way to verse 2, right? Verse 2, two of chapter 12. Yeah, 2 of chapter 12, not Hebrews 1 11. So all of verse chapter 11, yeah. then chapter 12, yes. verses 1 and 2. Awesome. Nailed it. Um, so yeah, hit pause on the video, take a read through that, and read through it slowly. Um, there's, there's a lot um, in there. Um, but yeah, and we will we'll jump into that. So I'm going to pray for you, Sean, and then you can uh, share what, what you have to share. Sure. Okay. Father, thank you for uh, your faithfulness to us, and thank you, Lord, for the incredible power of, uh, of your word and the credible power that faith um, does in our life and that, yeah, we have been brought out of darkness into light um, because of, of the powerful working of faith and your faith can create, uh, yeah, can create worlds. Um, and so, Lord, we, um, yeah, we just uh, pray that as Sean shares this morning, um, that that new things would be born in our lives and in our hearts as we uh, receive uh, your word um, with faith. And so, yeah, bless Sean to share and to share well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go for it. Yeah, so Hebrews 11. If, uh, I know, when I'm reading it, it's definitely one of the most feel-good chapters in the Bible. Yeah. And... It's just as I read through it, it's 
just like, you know, yeah, way to go, Noah. Go, Abraham. Like, all these great testimonies of faith and what's been accomplished by faith. And that, that's something that's really good. It's really encouraging to us. But there's also a challenge behind it that I, I don't want us to ignore. Hmm. And that challenge comes, it becomes more obvious when we read it straight from what comes right before it in chapter 10, verses 35 to 39, where it says, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. So there's a challenge in here yeah. um, to live by faith. It says, we are not those who shrink back, but we're those who have faith preserving of the soul. And then it continues to describe all these things that people who have lived by faith have done and accomplished. And we've seen before in Hebrews, uh, through what Ray has shared with us, that faith is the catalyst that gives the gospel its power. Mm. And we've, we've looked at the Israelites who they've done all these great things they they saw all the plagues of Egypt. They were delivered from the Egyptians. They were yeah. they passed through the Red Sea and they received all these blessings of manna and water, these miracles in the desert. And yet it still says the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. So looking at Hebrews, it's been contrasting two lifestyles right. throughout all, all throughout. It's contrasting, there's the life that began in faith, like the Israelites, but over time it's become lazy or sluggish. And it's just content to ride on past successes. It doesn't need to live by faith anymore. Hmm. And then there's the life that perseveres in faith and is diligent to hope in God's promises. Yeah. In chapter 6, verses 10 to 12, we read, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. There's been lots of strong warnings and exhortations throughout Hebrews. Don't let yourself live the first way. Hmm. There is a very real danger that way. Right. And we've looked at a lot of those. But instead, live by faith, hmm. hold firmly, to our faith. These are some of the things we've, verses we've heard. Yeah. Let us be diligent to enter God's rest. We need to persevere. The righteous will live by faith. And all these, all these exhortations bring us up to Hebrews chapter 11. And there's sort of been a structure that I've been looking at it like, and the way I, what I've been breaking down this chapter is there's this verse right at the beginning that's super familiar. We've all, many of us could recite it. It's, it's the verse that says that faith is the assurance of what's hoped for. It's the substance of things unseen. Hmm. And it's a super familiar verse, and it gives us a really good definition of what faith is. And, you know, for often uh, for us, I think, if we were just to go, if we wanted a definition of faith, we'd just go to this verse, read it, and say, yeah, that's faith. That's what faith is. Right. But the, chap the chapter doesn't stop there. It keeps going. And for the rest of chapter 11, I think it continues to give this definition of what faith is. Mm. But it doesn't do so by saying so much what faith is. Mm. But it, it illustrates what faith is by what faith does. Right. So there's just this one, it tells you something about faith that there's just this one verse that says this is what faith is. And then the whole rest of the chapter, 39 verses, uh, keeps on iterating and repeating and telling examples of what yeah. faith does. And 
I think it's common for us to think of faith and to use the word faith. It's, it's such a common word in, for Christians because, you know, it's such a core central idea to our, our belief and to our salvation. And it's common to use it and to hear it used like faith is just something that we have, that it's just some quality or some thing that sits, it just sits on a shelf in the back of our head. Right. And as long as we have it, then we're good. And, right. and we hear phrases like, you just have to keep the faith or you just have to have faith. Hmm. And I think that we, what we, the reality we can recapture from Hebrews is that faith always has actions attached to it. It's right. not just something we have, but it's something that we do. We live. Yeah. yeah you live by faith. You yeah. don't just have faith. Yeah. It's good. So after, after this definition saying, this is what faith is, this is what faith does. We get to chapter 12 and the first two verses of chapter 12. And they are, they are really just a strong exhortation coming off of this definition. That's, it just says to us, let's live this way ourselves. Hmm. This is how the ancients lived. This is how Jesus lived. This yeah. is how anyone considered righteous in any time period lived. Yeah. And this, this is how we should live. Let's yeah. live by faith. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, starting off in at the beginning in that initial verse, that initial definition, we read that Faith is the conviction of not things, things not seen, mm -hmm. of the unseen. And so there's this reality that there are things that we're seeing around us, things that we experience, and there's things that we're not experiencing that we're still hoping for. Right. And what we, to live by faith, that means we're hoping in something that we're not seeing currently. Yeah. And in our lives, there can be lots of times when we don't see the need for some unseen thing. When, when our life is good, when we're experiencing everything we could want, when we're very comfortable in our lives, then it's not so evident that we even need to look beyond what we're seeing, right. to look yeah. to something unseen. And it's only th things it's only times when we face something like, like a global pandemic, for example, or sickness and death mm. in our families and those close to us and impossible financial situations and friends and families stuck in sinful or unhealthy habits right. or sin in our own life that just, we just can't get rid of. Yeah. It's when we face those things, when the things we're seeing, the things we're experiencing are not, they're not, good when we can see that they're clearly not good then that's the times when it really becomes obvious two things become obvious it's that the idea of this unseen these unseen promises of god that there's something greater that god has more in store for us right than what we can see yeah. that idea becomes two things it becomes firstly more attractive to us yeah. that there's more but it, these troubles and these trials it also makes that reality harder to believe. Mm -hmm. So when we face things, when the scene, the, what we experience around us isn't, isn't this ideal, it makes faith in the unseen more necessary, mm -hmm. but harder to hold on to. Right. Yeah, and so when we do face troubles, trials, things that upset our daily life, like like this pandemic has been, um, we really have to ask, and it's important to ask um, the question: what What exactly is this unseen thing that we're hoping for? What are the promises of God? And we need to remind ourselves and look at what exactly it is that our hope is in. Hmm. If it's not in these things around us, if we, when we're seeing the hopelessness of the world around us, what exactly do we have hope in? Yeah. And 
you know, Hebrews 11, it, there's, I just love how it begins. It gives us a great picture of what our hope exactly is. And Hebrews 11, it, it goes through several different stages, several different lists. And it begins with Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, and all these people who they're named, they're, it, they're listed, and it says these people did this and this, and it tells of all the faithful and great works that they did. And then it, it continues it, as, it, as the chapter progresses. It gets a bit more vague. It stops naming them. The author at one point just says, you know, I don't even have enough time to list all mm -hmm. of the things I want to list here, yeah. all of the examples of faith. And yeah, he just, throughout that, he tells of all the good things they accomplished through faith. And from this, if we look at this, we see that our faith is in a God who is always active. Mm. And he's powerfully meeting his people's needs. He's there for them. He's responding when they, when they respond in faith to his word, he is there and he meets their needs. He blesses them. And this is such a, this is such a good and true part of our hope. But then we keep reading in Hebrews 11 and we realize it doesn't stop there because after this, it takes a sudden turn and it lists many, many who lived these terrible, unpleasant lives and they died even worse deaths. Mm -hmm. They were, they were tortured, they were imprisoned, they were sawn in two. It says they were ill-treated men of whom the world was not worthy. Right. And then it says after this that they too gained approval for, for their faith. Hmm. And in amongst this listing of all these people, it says in two places that both those lived, both those who lived the miraculous, like blessed lives and those who suffered and were martyred, they, both of them, it says, they did not receive what was promised. They had the faith to perform miracles, but their faith was not in the miracles. Hmm. Because even throughout, even all that they received, it says that they died without receiving the promises. Hmm. They only saw it and greeted, greeted them from right. afar. Yeah. And if we really look at Abraham's life, it's along with the lives of every, all the faithful in history, and even our own lives, they're always a, both a mix of blessings and suffering. Yeah. So if our faith is just in the good life, that God will give us a good life here on earth, human experience tells us that that's not something that's worth putting our faith in. It's not right. worth putting our faith in that everything will be fine and dandy on earth and that we'll, they, that we'll always be able to avoid suffering or that God will relieve our suffering hmm. uh, through faith. And even if Abraham didn't suffer at all, even if there was nothing, nothing unpleasant about his life, even if his faith led him into just blessing upon blessing, even if he obtained every single promise in this life, if, if he had received all the promises God was making to him, the fact is he still died. And all these faithful in Hebrews 11, they still died after that. Yeah. And any, any promises that we do obtain this side of death are, they're empty promises if they're then stolen away by death. Yeah. If we receive them for a while, but then they're just taken away when we die. Right. Uh, so we see that our faith, the core of our faith, must be in a promise that transcends death. Hmm. And that's what we see in the gospel, is that our faith is in the incorruptible life of Jesus Christ, yeah. which he has freely given to those who believe. Yeah. 
so the faith we have as believers is in, it's in Jesus' atonement for our sins, the defeat of death through resurrection, which will one day cul culminate in the redemption of our bodies at his return. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely a tension here between there's this reality that life we are not going to see we're not going to receive the promises in this life that the promises that we have ultimate hope for yeah. are beyond this life that are based on Jesus Jesus's returning or our eventual resurrection mm. on the other side of death but then we're also holding this reality that God is still active in this world and he's powerful and he desires to yeah to bring life here for us now yeah 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 that's good i'm gonna just jump in and um i think what you're touching on sean is uh is is really good and it's a uh, it's a massive uh a massive thing to talk talk about and uh you're just touching on it but i think what I hear you, what I hear you saying, and maybe a good picture is that, and I don't wear glasses, you do, but I don't, but Brittany sometimes says I should probably get glasses, but um, whatever, I don't wear glasses yet, uh, um, but... How many, how many people do you have? <laughs> Four. Four. Obviously. Okay. Um, You're but, probably fine. Yeah, I'm probably fine. Um, but uh, it's like wearing, I guess faith in, in many ways is like a pair of uh, bifocals is that what they call them where you can look like through the bottom or look through the top right I think that's what they call them. yeah no, so it, yeah yeah so yeah it, there's a mix there's two different areas yes you can even have trifocals yes as well so there's there's the lens that helps you see far away and yes. one that see, see, helps yeah. you see what's very close yeah yeah and faith I guess uh, in what you're saying uh, faith is a lot like that that we should be looking to the immediacy of of our lives and our situations and be be anticipating and and listening to how god wants to um speak to us and how he wants to engage um there and right there and right then but we're also faith is very much also looking forward um to the the day that we anticipate where where god will actually um, yeah there's more of salvation yet for him to um, unfold and unwrap in our life um, although it's finished, it's done, the work of Jesus is completed, we, we do anticipate uh, a day when there will be no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more pain, all those things. And so, yeah, faith, faith does both, right? It looks to the present, but it also very much is looking and anticipating something that's far off and distant. Yeah, and we can often focus on just the here and now. Right. Whereas... Our true hope is in the eternal. Yeah. And um, there are there are aspects of there are eternal things that we can take part in and participate right now. And there's other things that are are uh, that we have to wait for that we have to hold on to in faith. Right. And sometimes we can get caught up just in seeking faith we can hold on to this faith that is for temporary blessings right for comfort in this earth or for well-being or prosperity right in this earth and there are things now that we can hold on to there are things now that god is doing that will last forever and yeah. that are eternal and yeah. there's also these things that will that can make us comfortable and make uh help us enjoy life now more but really they don't have any eternal value because they they won't last into eternity they're just temporal yeah so we need to really be setting our hope on things that are eternal right and we do have a, an eternal hope yeah it's not just a hope that can be stolen away by death right or as soon as things go bad as the economy goes yeah it's not it's uh our hope we do need to put our hope in things that are eternal yeah totally and yeah there is a tension between that between okay when like what is god
doing now and what is he asking us to hold on to in faith and that's that's really much the same tension we've been looking at has been felt throughout history and in the Old Testament we've been looking at this Old Testament faith of of those who were under the law and they had this same faith in eternal internal redemption that Jesus or that a savior would come that God would redeem fallen humanity they had the same faith but there is slight differences whereas they were very much looking forward to a faith it was something that hadn't happened yet yeah whereas for us there's this mix there that Jesus has come he has secured so much for us yeah yet there's still much that we're still looking forward to so yeah. in many ways we still do feel that same tension as right. they did in the old testament that we've been looking at where those under the law they would bring sacrifices and they would they would trust they would hold on to in faith that that these sacrifices they were cleansing the flesh that their flesh was good but then there was this reality in them that you know they were very aware that there is more that that needs to be cleansed they needed a cleansed conscience right. it says in hebrews and that's what jesus came to do and he has done that we we've received that cleansed conscience that that uh the old testament faithful were looking forward to yeah and we've received so much for more than that we've received like the holy spirit we've received new life that that is eternal that they 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 died in hope in yeah in faith that to one day receive that along with us we received that we we have this life that is eternal in us yeah and we do have the ability through the holy spirit to to participate in what god is doing to to do greater things than jesus did on this earth is what he said yeah, I think that I think that's really good, Sean, and uh, that's a huge part of what we're seeing throughout the the book of Hebrews. And I think you base you kind of started with, with essentially saying the same thing that that it's not good enough for us to just count on our faith that we had in the past, right? But this whole idea of what's the trajectory and are we uh, today? Um, if you hear His voice today, like don't harden your heart today. Um, and our response is actually a daily response of, of faith to Jesus. And, and we, we can't just say, well, I had faith a while back. The, the trajectory of our life will start to lean like that example of a bike. And, and we need to be intentional to say, actually, today, um, I'm going to choose um, to put faith in God. I'm going to choose to trust him regardless of how I feel. Um, I'm going to make that course correction um, away from falling over and back into um, back into faith. Um, so yeah, carry on. Yeah, because there there is definitely that that aspect. There's two parts of it. There is you, you can trust in in God to correct our faith, but you there are also times where it's it's always better if we are able to correct our faith before we need to be called back or disciplined by yeah. God. Yeah, which is what we're going to get into next week is that yeah. discipline does happen. Um, yeah. And that's often, that's often why. It's because we've kind of, we've started to, to lean. Yeah, fall over. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it, definitely what I want to emphasize in this is, you know, it's, it's easy to, to neglect spending that time with God, easy to neglect uh, our devotional time and just seeking God but that's really really where our faith comes from that's yep. where we meet with God and and our faith is bolstered where it's sustained is in that time with God right and it's just as I've always experienced when when I've when I've spent time journaling when listening to God after a long time where I just have been neglecting that it's always yeah so fruitful and I've been I just ask why <laughs> yeah why wasn't I why doing wasn't this? I doing yeah. this before totally. yeah so 
yeah, just to, that's one aspect of living faith in faith mm -hmm. is just that continued desire and uh, commitment to be with God. Yeah. To continue. Yeah. To grow in our faith, to continue to grow closer to Him. Yeah. And another is this, this, this uh, encouragement that faith gives us to to go out into the world boldly and this may seem like it's a strange time to be talking about going out it doesn't really seem like <laughs> a message about faith leading us to go out is relevant but really what I think is at at, at the heart of what I want to share is something that's really really relevant and it, it really ties in with a lot of what Charlie was talking about last week as well and it's it's asking the question are the things we're doing worthwhile right and when you think about it the things that we do the things that we occupy our time with yeah we do them because we consider them to be worthwhile we think you know if I do these things there's something to be gained by them yeah and in a sense, we're, we're putting faith in those things that there is some promise in those things that we are going to gain by, by doing them. Yeah. And especially in a time like this when, you've, when our routines have been upset and we find that there's a lot more time on our hands, I, I know I have been faced with this, this habit that you know, I'm, I'm really good at starting things. You know, when, when I'm faced with this free time, I have all these ideas of things I can do. And, you know, I, I then start some of them. And when I start, I have all these expectations. I think, you know, this is great. I have all this free time. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to do this and this and this. And then at some point through that, I realize or I start to feel like, you know, I lose that sense that there's something to gain. I, I, right. I find, you know, this is, it seems a bit futile to be doing this. I lose that sense of promise. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, then when that happens, I just, I end up looking to the next thing on my list to start. Yeah. And I think that, that is really a picture of what we look like as people when we when we lose faith that the things that God has asked us to do are worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. And you know there there could be things that that God has called us to do, things that we know are helpful that that could be beneficial to the church and to us to pursue this this eternal hope that we have yeah to pursue the hope we have that we there are things we can do but we've lost faith that there that there is something to gain by them right or we're we're distracted by all these other things because we think you know there right now there's there's more to gain by doing this that yeah. And Something else, that, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I can say for myself that without that that faith to to act on what God is saying, to act in obedience to His Word, and even to spend time in His Word to to receive what He's actually calling me to do, when when I don't have the faith to do that, I can get caught up in just going from one thing to the other that things that ultimately prove not worthwhile. Yeah. And I, I can tell myself, you know, I'm just waiting for God to give me something worthwhile to do. But often I think we need to go to God and, and hear again, the things that he is yeah. asking us to do, the totally. things that are worthwhile and to receive the faith that, that, tells us that helps us to actually go out and totally. do those things yeah yeah that's good yeah so this living by faith not just 
not just having faith, but living by faith is a mix of these two things. And we have to keep that habit of intentionally approaching God, yeah. of seeking to grow closer to him and looking to his word to, to increase our faith and yeah. guide our actions. And then we also have to have that willingness and to do things, to spend time on the things that have eternal value, yeah. not just temporal value. Yeah. And in, in that, um, I think really there's this really, this so much value in these two verses right at the end or at the beginning of chapter 12. Right. Um, we are given some strong exhortations to actually live this out, that, mm. that Jesus has secured the possibility for us to live this out. He has secured our our justification yeah. and our sanctification. He right. is able to work within us to to lead us into this. Yeah. So it, it, it's possible for us to do this. And there there's there's some practical tips actually in in Hebrews twelve verse one yeah. and two that I just like to go over. The first is it talks about this great cloud of witnesses. It says, since we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses that that is a motivation for us to be to be living by faith to do the same thing and we can really be inspired by by reading the bible right yeah. like what i was saying you know just reading hebrews 11 this is mm -hmm. this is a list of all yeah the the faithful acts that people have done the yeah the lives that were lived by faith and yeah. it can really be inspiring to us and even beyond that, there's the, this cloud of witnesses. It isn't just people in the Bible. It's yeah. all the faithful throughout history. Yeah. Reading the faith, about the faith of people in history and being inspired by that. And, and even around us in, in our body, there's, there's these witnesses totally. that, that we're living with that yeah. we can we can Im be inspired by the faithful things that they're doing yeah. and we can, we can live in a way as we live more by faith, we will also become more of an inspiration to them. Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, verse one says, it points us to this, wit this cloud of witnesses. And so it's saying there's all these witnesses there they're they're looking at us they're watching us but we we're also watching them so right. there's this life where we're we're watching and we're being watched yeah and we're we're not just expecting more from ourselves we're expecting things from each other yeah and we're allowing stuff to be expected from us yeah not not that we should be focused on what so much on what other people are expecting above what God expects yeah. uh, of us. Yeah. But we, we can be such an inspiration and motivation and that can be such a help for us in our faith is to look to each other yeah. in that. This, there's this other tip that we, we receive in these two verses and that's to put off any encumbrance and sin. And that's what I was talking about yeah. in, you know, what are these worthwhile things? There are things that are not worthwhile yeah. that we should just put these things off. Yeah. Um, we may, may see a hope that's false in them and that we know that our only true hope is in, in Jesus and what yeah. he is doing, what he's calling us to do in the eternal things that he has for us. Yeah. That is where our hope is. So with, with our eyes set on that hope, let's, let's put off these things that don't have any eternal value yeah let's let's watch what track we're on are we being distracted into other things are we being faithful yeah. and and carrying the things god has given us to to carry yeah and and to finish up off the uh the greatest tip i guess you could call it the mm -hmm. exhortation that we have is to fix our eyes on jesus yeah and in that, um, we're both looking to 
all the things that he has done in the past, all the things that he has secured for us, and all the things that are accomplished and established, and just the testimony of everything he has done in the past. Hmm. And we're also looking forward in faith to the things that we haven't received yet, yeah. to the promises that we have, to the hope that, that, that one day he will return again. Yeah. And, and the joy we'll have in that, hmm. that we can have now in the fact that we have that eternal yeah. inheritance. Yeah. And let's also look to Jesus as he's working right now. Let's look to the things he's doing right now. Yeah. And to, to spend time in that wor the word and to just you know, live, live our daily lives with, in what Jesus is doing. Yeah in and amongst us in in this in his kingdom yeah and you know as as hebrews is telling us let's look to jesus as our high priest because he is he is able to sympathize with our weakness he has he has blazed the path for us yeah and and he is now he is he has gone above that he has gone he has achieved the victory over over the suffering and the corruption of this world and yeah. he is he is now sitting at the right hand of the throne of god yeah and he is interceding for us he is he is cheering us on and he is defending us yeah and and working for our good mm. so yeah that that's where where i'm finishing that's yeah that's really i think a great place to leave it on yeah. is it is just to look you know, Jesus, Jesus is the example of this and he, yeah. he is also the power to, to live it out. Yeah. 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 That's great, Sean. Um, thanks for, for sharing and, uh, yeah, to speak on something like faith is, uh, it's so simple and yet it's so, it's such a huge thing, um, to speak on and yeah, thanks for, for all that you shared and, um, yeah, I think just, uh, pull out again um just the encouragement for for us to to draw near um to the lord and and to do that by faith and lots of lots of voices we can have lots of uh things our our conscience or our mind can be telling us but um faith is is uh it actually does best in in the circumstances where it seems impossible and where things seem tough and where things seem dark and all that stuff and and that's really what Hebrews, uh, this chapter is telling us is, is faith doesn't need things to be <laughs> perfect and peachy. Um, faith, that's actually where faith comes in. And so in our wrestlings and our struggles, let's, let's uh, see faith come alive in our hearts um, and draw near to God. And let's keep uh, seeking first his kingdom and let's hear from God. Maybe there's some things that, that a while ago we were really fired up about because we heard from him and and now weeks months maybe even years later we've we've really lost that fire and that passion um and we need to we need to draw near and we need to hear god and receive fresh faith um for the activities that he wants us to be involved in yeah. um so yeah challenge you to to chat about that uh maybe those two things uh in your in your home uh this this morning this afternoon yeah. this evening and just say um yeah how can how can i grow in faith and draw near to god how can i grow in faith and in being uh, involved in the things that he wants me to be involved in, um, to go out and to see people uh, come to know the Lord also. So yeah, thanks again for sharing, Sean. You did a great yeah. job. Um, super glad you guys joined us. And yeah, I'll pray for you guys and then, and then send you off. God, thanks so much for uh, the example that you have laid in uh, scripture over and over and over and over again of people that believed you. Um, they believed even in really uh, challenging circumstances. They even believed when they didn't see the fulfillment of what they were believing in. And we want to be like those people too. Um, and so help us, help us fix our eyes freshly on Jesus to see him, uh, to, to receive fresh faith from him as we hear his voice. And yeah, that this week would be marked by uh, by people drawing near to you, to hear you, to receive faith, um, to believe your promises, and to trust you. Uh, bless each person who's tuned in this morning uh, to listen. We trust, Lord, that they've heard something from you, 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, bless you. Have a good afternoon. Enjoy the sunshine, and we'll see you next week.